All right. The first thing you are going to need to do is write these. So the first thing we have to do is replace this as an augmented matrix, which is what we will do. Let's zoom in on this. All right, if we change this to an augmented matrix, it really is almost just the same thing as putting brackets around our two original equations. But matrices cannot have any variables or operations or equal signs. Every, every one of the coefficients stays, okay? So we have an X column, a Y column, and then just a number column right here. So in this, I see the coefficient in this first equation in this row. The coefficient of X is 1. The coefficient of Y is a positive 5. And then the number is just negative 13, or the answer. In the second row, which we're going to put in the second row, the coefficient of x is negative 2, the coefficient of y is positive 2, and the answer there equals a negative 10. That is the augmented matrix. If it makes you feel better inside, you can put the line there. I don't really care. Then what do you do? I do prefer matrices just because you can do many, many different steps at, at the same time. But at this, at most people hate this right now. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's look at what we can do with this. So you can, you can use any one of three elementary row operations. What that means is I can flip the two equations. So if I wanted that top one to be on the bottom, I could. That doesn't change anything. I can multiply any one row by any number. As long as I multiply all of the row. Yeah. Um, the last thing you can do is you can add the rows together. Yeah, let's just do that. Um, yeah. That seems the easiest. This, this should sound a lot right now. It should sound a lot like the elimination technique oh, yeah. because that's exactly what it is. So you just set it up different though. Yeah. Right? I mean, if, if we looked at the original system right there, and we said, do it by elimination. You would multiply that top equation by either 2. Or 2. Oh, yeah. yeah I 2 would work. Why don't you just go or X, you could, 1x minus 2x? What? No, 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 no. You don't want to add the rows just yet, kind of. Yeah, kind of. It's like, so what you're this matrix right here is the one we really, really want. Now, we don't have to go that far, though, because so we turn these two equations into this, this matrix right here. Now, we could take them, we could take the equations out of the matrix, right? So, in other words, what this means is this bottom row, because this is the y column, would have 1y equals whatever the number is. Does that make sense? If I took that... If I took that row out of the matrix, that's what I would have. That top row, since that's the x column, I would have 1x equals some number as well. So that's the objective. So yeah, that's what we're trying to do right there. So how do we do this? Well, I'm going to work on this uh, matrix that we have right here. Okay. Uh, it's not a mess yet, but it will be. <laughs> so, I have a 1 already in that top left corner right here, right? Mm -hmm. So, that's good. That's a, that's a pretty good start, okay? Now, I usually start by showing, it, it kind of like we would with the elimination technique. So, I'm going to get rid of that 1 for now. Not that you would have to, okay? But I'm going to say, look, I'm going to take, I'm going to take two and multiply it by row one. So this is the proper notation for this. Now I'm not, I'm not doing anything to row two. I'm going to say the top one is row one, the bottom one is row two. Can you take any number out of row two and multiply row one by it? it yeah, uh, let me let me show that actually right here, okay? Because if we were to do that to the the original equation, I would multiply everything by two, right? Mm -hmm. And I'd get 2x plus 
10y, mm -hmm. y equals negative 26. Mm -hmm. Well, this is going to, this, this is, I just did the same thing. I just showed it differently. So I have a new top row. You just did a different, instead of elimination, you started right. to do it at the top, you're doing a matrix instead. Uh, yes, that's correct. But you're going to get the same answer. But the mm -hmm. test is yeah. going to ask us to set up a matrix yes. and do it that way. And use elementary row operations, which is what we're doing. So that gives us 2, 10, and negative 26, just like it would if it were elimination, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't do anything to that bottom row, so it stayed the same. But why did you pick 2? Like, why did yeah, so we're demonstrating this kind of simultaneously with gotcha. that elimination thing. So you're strategically... By the way, some of you guys hate this. Um, in the next class, where you're doing three variables, this is the best. And you will love it. Well, not, not love it, but you know what I mean. All right. So using another elementary row operation, so I can add the two together, right? So I'm going to say, I'm going to take row one, and I'm going to add it to row two. What's elementary row operation? What does that mean? It means use elimination. Okay. So what does that mean? I didn't do anything to row one. It stays the same. So you always leave row one alone. Uh, so what happens there? So I have row one plus the second row. Well, two plus negative two is zero. zero. That's great. That's what we want right there. And then I've got 10 plus two is 12. And negative 26 plus negative 10 is a negative 36. So it's 12y minus 36. Yeah, if we were to change this now, that bottom row, just the bottom row, back into an equation, which we're not going to do because we want to use elementary row operations, but that would be 12y equals negative 36. What would you do to solve for y? Divide by 12. Yeah, you divide by 12. We can indicate that using elementary row operations on this. I'm going to take row 2 and divide by 12, which would give me 0 divided by 12 is 0, 12 divided by 1 is 1, and negative 36 divided by 12 is negative 3. So I have this new matrix now, and the top row is still what it was, right there. And that bottom row, which is nice, tells us that y is negative 3. You see how if we pull that in and out mm -hmm. of the matrix, it gives us the answers there? All right, so that's where we are. And we have one answer. And we can see from the original, that's what we wanted, right? And that's what that bottom row is right now. Um, let's change that top row back, though, to what it was, because remember how it was 1, 5, negative 13? Those are smaller numbers to work with, and that's great. I like smaller numbers. So, let's go and erase that garbage. And I can operate on that row from before by saying I'm going to take row 1 and divide it by 2, which again just changes it back to the original row 1. But we leave row 2 as what we right. as the yeah. y. Yeah. Okay. So we can leave that alone now. We'll work with it. So, so the top row is x, the bottom row is y. I mean, uh, yeah, is it turns out that standard? way. Yes. Okay. Now, again, one, one of the things about this, this top equation is x plus 5y equals negative 13. Right? Some of you guys are just going to want to go in and replace y with that negative 3 mm -hmm. and solve. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Solve for x like that. But if you continue the matrix, how do you do it? But if you continue the matrix, this is what we're going to do. And that's what we'll do, is, yeah, we're going to take row 2 and start making it affect row 1. But it's the new row 2. Right. Um, this is how you do two steps in one, okay? Is if I multiply row 2, oh, man, that's too big. If I take row 2 and multiply it by 5, then I'd get the same coefficient for the y's. So if I make that a negative 5 and add that to row 1, then it's going to change row 1, but it's only going to change the y value. The new row 2, meaning this one right here, 0, 1, negative 3? Yeah, right. So right, if I take negative 5 and multiply it by the 0 and add it to 1, it's not changing that 1, which is what we don't want to happen. 
But if I take negative 5 times 1 and add that to 5, 0, bam. That's what we wanted from up here. Well, negative 5 times negative 3 is 15, plus negative 13 would give us 2. Then we still have that bottom row, 0, 1, negative 3. And this is, that's it. That's all we got to do right there. So X equals Can two. you show it in the longer steps? The Just elimination? Not doing it in the two steps in the longer Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so y doing this longer, it's just going to take two steps instead of one. We've, we've already seen that y is negative 3, so we don't really have to worry about that second row. What I would do is I would take 5. It's the same idea. I'm going to take negative 5 and multiply it by row 2. And that would give me this matrix. So I'm going to change this up here. Wait, why are you choosing negative 5? Yeah. Uh, because I want to eliminate the 5 oh, okay. on oh, the top okay. equation, the row 1, yeah. So now I've got 0, negative 5, and negative 15. Couldn't you choose negative 1? Then 1 plus negative 1 would become 0. Um, oh, you no, don't want that column no. to be zero, though. Yeah. Okay. So we still have the 1, 5, and negative 13. Now, this is just the second step. I'm going to take row... Is it your 15 positive? 2... No, it's negative. It is positive. I apologize. Yes, thank you. So row 2 plus row 1, and that would give me... Well, 0 plus 1 is... 1. Negative 5 plus 5 is 0. That's what we wanted. 15 plus negative 13 is 2. And at this point, we could also take row 2 and divide it by negative 5 again, giving us 0, 1, negative 3. Now, hopefully you guys see the value of this from that 1, right? Like you could do two steps in 1. Well, if we, if we were operating on both rows at the same time, it's like combining four steps in one as well. So, that's very nice. So to finish this off, right, that, that top row tells us that x is 2. So the answer, just like it always has been, is an ordered pair, 2, negative 3. So that's what the solution? That is the actual solution right there. Yes.